good. I'm good. Very nice to have you here yeah. on the show. Yeah. I'm you a big fan of yours. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks for coming on the program. Um, you've been traveling around a lot. That's one thing I kind of envy about actors. You've had this experience, too, where you, you get to travel. Like, you'll shoot a movie yeah. in an exotic place. You were in Hungary not yeah, too Buda, long ago. Yeah, Budapest. I just, uh, we just finished the movie um, last week, actually. It's called Den of Lions. And uh, it was a crazy place. <laughs> did, did people... Does any, do people know who you are in, in Hungary? Yeah, in Hungary it was kind of crazy. I mean, I think like Blade was probably like the most commercial film I'd ever, I'd ever done. So it did really, I guess, really well in Hungary because people wear like fangs and, the, you know, they're playing the Blade song in the clubs and stuff. And people go to the cl clubs and play techno Blade music? Yeah, it's like that, that Blade song from the opening, you know. Right, and, right. And, um, and there's a lot of gangsters in, in Budapest, you know, a lot of... Uh, like serious, like former Cold War gangsters. Yeah, like, like people almost like Russia. I mean, I've, I've never been to Russia, but I could, you know only a man I mean you know like Turkish gangsters and at the same time there's like a lot of beautiful girls too so I think this is like a really you've described the craziest sounding country yeah, like it's beautiful gangsters beautiful women and everyone's dressed up like a blade character <laughs> <laughs> you know rocking out to techno music yeah, yeah I mean the uh, I you know I would meet like a girl you know I, I, I met a girl one night and and, um, and it looked like she was with one of these gangsters and I didn't want to you know I didn't want to die in Hungary or something you never know <laughs> yeah you never know what's gonna you know I'd rather go out somewhere else but right, um, right. Um, basically, I, you know, I, I had a driver, and he was a translator, so the girl didn't speak any English. So we'd, you know, we'd go out to dinner and stuff, and and then we went out to dinner like five times. And I'd say something, he'd say it in Hungarian. She'd translate. Say it back, yeah. Translate. By the end of the, uh, the the fifth dinner, I totally forgot the girl. It really brought me and the driver together. <laughs> you know I mean? It's like me and, and like Zoli became. Uh, you know, I love was, you, Zoli. <laughs> yeah, we called him Zoli Knight because he was our driver at night time. So, uh huh. Yeah. Now you, I was looking through your, your, all the work that you've done, you've done a lot of uh, different movies, and then one thing caught my eye, you worked, you were on Different Strokes once. Yeah, that's where, yeah, I, in the beginning, uh, before I went into the movies, I kind of did these guest uh, spots on all these different shows that I grew up watching, so it was... Right, you must have been a real, you must have been a kid at the time. Yeah, yeah, I was like, you know, I would always watch Different Strokes and Silver Spoons and all those shows, and so I, I got this part, this gig on Different Strokes, and... I was on the set, the Drummond family. It was kind of surreal, you know. Doc, you know, the, the dad was there. Especially if you're a kid like, and you see these people, like, oh, there's the Drummond house. And yeah, Mr. And I'm Drummond. on the set, and the audience is out there, and you know, right. the father's there, Todd Bridges is there, but Gary Coleman wasn't there, and I was really excited to work with Gary. And uh, at the time, they didn't let me read the the whole script, so I didn't realize he wasn't in the episode, you know. Right. So um, I was with the little redhead guy, Danny, I think was his name, the, the redheaded kid. I was a Cub Scout on the They show. always do that at the end of a series. It must have been towards the end of the series. Yeah. When a show starts to, like, not do well anymore, they always bring in, and, and the kid starts to, like, one of the kids that was the big star in the beginning starts to grow up. They did right. this on Brady Bunch with Oliver. Uh. <laughs> they bring this kid, they, like, ship in, and they're like, give me a new kid in here! And so there's always these kids just Growing show up. up. With the yeah. Show, yeah. So yeah. they just like shove a little redheaded munchkin out there. And where's yeah. Arnold? I don't know. You know. Yeah. I you know so I was kind of upset about the Gary thing, but then I met him on a movie I did later, a few years later, <laughs> SFW. He did a little uh, a little cameo. Now, you've only thing. worked with Gary Coleman since. I, that's one of my highlights. Was I mean, he rocking out in the techno club he in was, Hungary? Yeah. I like to see Gary in Hungary. It would be funny. Now, oh, I'm sure he gets around yeah. traveling the world. Yeah. Um, I saw you in, in I Shot Andy Warhol, you did something that that surprised a lot of people. You played a drag queen in this yeah. in this movie, and a lot yeah. of people were, and you did a great job oh, doing it. This must have been, uh, we have actually a still uh, from, the, from the movie. This oh, is yeah. you. <laughs> How are you doing? This yeah. is you from the movie and about four hours ago. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... But you, you went the whole nine yards. You had your eyebrows plucked. You, I mean, you, you just really... Yeah, I went for it. I mean, it was weird because we were shooting in New York, and, and you know, Candy Darling was, was very... Uh, she looked like a woman. So this is playing of, a real sort of protege yeah. of Andy Warhol. I mean, she and was Candy on everything, Darling. on hormones. I mean, I said, I'll do everything for the part, but I'm not going to take hormones, you know, because I, you know, I got other movies to make after. And, uh, <laughs> they were like, we want to do surgery and have you go on hormones. Yeah. And to so, shoot this independent movie. But everybody yeah. kind of looked, when I wasn't in the makeup, everybody kind of looked at me very strange because I had no, you know, I had very little eyebrows and stuff. So I had like meetings at the time and I was just looking. I wanted to have a sign on myself that just said, I'm here making a movie. I'm playing a drag queen. Right. Stop looking at me. Stop staring yeah, at I me. I didn't get weird or something. You know, Hollywood hasn't, you know, right. made me crazy. Did it hurt? Like, I mean, I'm sure while you're doing that role, you have to interview for the next movie yeah and you're trying to interview with people and you've got plucked eyebrows yeah I had a meeting with Woody Allen and it was it was very strange I said to my agent please tell him that you know I've never met Woody Allen I'm a fan of his please tell him that uh, I look strange you know and I'm not you know <laughs> and 
and uh, and so I went there, and I think you know he didn't say much anyway. He's just yeah, yeah, and and I think he thought I looked very strange, and I don't know if that call went through beforehand, but right, he was a nice guy. Was he adjusting his glasses a lot and yeah, saying, was in a screening room, making me nauseous really cool. and yeah, getting all yeah. Woody said, Allen? -y. He asked me what I was working on. I said I'm I'm playing a drag queen right now. Like, oh great. <laughs> <laughs> Then he backed out of the room and someone else yeah. came in and it's said, real, this real, meeting's over. Yeah, a real quick meeting. So. Um, Deuce is Wild. Yeah. Tell us about this, this film. Deuce is Wild is a movie actually we made about a year, year and, uh, and a half ago. So it was supposed to come out uh, September 14th. It was moved to May 3rd. It's, a, it's kind of a 1950s uh, rumble movie kind of to me. It, it goes back to throw back to like The Outsiders. Or, um, it's a lot of young guys, a lot of, a lot of tough fight scenes. It's a story about two brothers growing up in, uh, in 1958. They've lost one brother. And now they're, um, you know, Leon, my character, is just trying to kind of keep this block, this small radius clean and uh, clean from drugs, clean from just violence. And, and uh, Marco, Norman Reedus, who plays Marco, is coming out of prison and he's just kind of pushing all my buttons. And um, it becomes kind of like a Western high noon. We have a clip here. Do we, uh, do we need to know anything for this clip? I think this clip's uh, me and uh, my brother Bobby, played by Brad Renfro. And uh, we're a little at odds in this scene, I think. Um, he's kind of a rambunctious kid. I'm trying to keep him on the good side here. I'll tell you this clip from Deuces Wild. This is Jimmy Pocket's sister. End of story. It's not the end of the story. The family killed your brother. You remember that? Yeah, well, you can't stop me from seeing her. Well, yeah? What are you going to do? I'll do whatever the I want to do. You're not my father, Leon. You want out, Bobby? What are you talking about? You want out of the gang? Because that's what you're asking for. Leon, I am always behind you. You want me to cut Jimmy Pockets into a million pieces? I'll do it. You want me to kill Marco? I'll do it. But Annie's my girl now. And you're just gonna have to accept that. Uh, that's swearing. You're in yeah, that's <laughs> kind of a rough clip there. Yeah. That's when every other word. Yeah. Uh, Deuce is Wild opens uh, next Friday. Stephen, thanks for being here. Thank really you. Really good to have Pleasure you on the show. Nice you. job. Stephen Dorff, everyone. We'll be right back with Super Furry Animals. Stick around. Oh.